All right, so now we are going to talk about binge eating and emotional triggers. So in our last video, we talked about binge eating being triggered by extreme dieting, right? And there's two usually big culprits why people binge. One is extreme restriction with food, putting a lot of moral attachments to food, feeling good or bad about eating certain foods. And so ultimately, you know, we overconsume, we binge because we have this, you know, last supper mentality. I'm, I'm never gonna eat this again. I'm gonna be good tomorrow. And we can have a full on binge with the promise that tomorrow is a new day or from extreme restriction with calories in a way to recompensate. Uh, and that usually is very body driven, uh, can be extreme hunger too, that triggers that. So that is controllable for most people by going up to maintenance calories and starting to eat more and restricting less and changing your relationship with food. On the flip side, there is the emotional triggers for binge eating. I struggled with both. <laughs> I, had, I had done the restrictive eating and was binging because of that. And I was also binging because of lack of emotional awareness, lack of knowing how to communicate properly. Um, and I had to learn all that basically. Um, so what this looks like for many of my coaching clients is, they really want their husband to do X. They've hinted at him doing X. They're secretly sitting there stewing because they did not do X. They're running around feeling unappreciated, dealing with all the kids stuff, um, super stressed, super busy. And the only relief they feel they get is when they crash at home six, seven o'clock at night and they're eating cookie after cookie after cookie in the pantry or they're eating multiple servings of dinner, multiple servings of desserts, and they're kind of binging later in the day because there has been no joy in their day. There has been no downtime in their day. They wanted people to do things or needed help, and they did not communicate it properly. Instead of expressing what they needed or wanted or paying somebody else to do it, they attempted to do everything on their own, that again, putting themselves out, and leading to an emotional binge. Emotional binging can also happen from trauma in the past, not dealing with things that might have happened to you in childhood or uh, as you've experienced life, pushing it under. And when those feelings erupt, when we feel something we don't like, food is a normal go-to. We push it down. I mean, it's so destructive, right? Like you want to lose weight, you want to get healthy, yet you're downing a pint of ice cream and a couple candy bars. And in the moment, and I'm just going to be honest with you, there were times when I was so angry that I could not binge longer, like my stomach had a limited capacity. I was still feeling feelings I didn't like, but there was no more room inside the body to shove more food to numb myself out from what I was feeling. Like in the time I was binging, I was distracted and feeling joyful and kind of letting the chocolate melt in my mouth and all these other things. And I wasn't having to experience the emotions. But then when you hit the full volume point where you can't get any more food in, it can be extremely frustrating for an emotional binge eater because you're still feeling the feelings and now there's no more room in the end to shove any more food. <laughs> and that was my real big, one of my, one of my really big wake up calls that I could not, food could not do the job that my emotions needed to have done. Food was never going to fix the issue long term because there was not, there was limited real estate inside my body. I could not eat long enough to really erase how I was feeling. So I had to learn how to communicate. I had to learn boundaries. I had to learn to put toxic relationships out of my life. I had to learn to start to view people as not knowing what I needed or wanted. And if I didn't clearly tell them, that was on me, it wasn't on them. And I needed to stand up and advocate for myself and what I needed. And let me tell you this, out of the two things, <laughs> the I'm restricting my eating and binging or the emotional triggers and the communication, the food one is way easier. Bumping up your calories, dropping back on your exercise, which we'll get to that in another video, that is more manageable and easy to do in the immediate. The emotional usually will require lots of books being read, lots of 
educational material being consumed, probably therapy, probably coaching, because what it is, a lot of the clients I work with don't realize that the way that they interact even at work, right? If, if they have a coworker or a boss who explodes on them and they go in the break room and binge because they feel anxiety and stress around this person, what it really comes down to is they just didn't set up a boundary. They didn't go to their boss and say, hey, you know, um, when we get new information that's upsetting, I think we each need to take a time out and go figure out our game plan and plan a meeting for a week later so we can sit down and hash this out. Because what I've noticed, and you don't say this to your boss, by the way, what I've noticed is when they get really upsetting and volatile information, they explode on me. And it is not helpful for me and it's really not helpful for them. But if I don't put a boundary in with them and tell them I'm not going to speak to them right away, I would like to schedule a sit down meeting with them for a few days or a week later you take the reins, but most people don't know to do that, right? Like I went through my whole life thinking that I was at everyone's beck and call, that what was good for others ipso facto had to be good for Heather. What you have to realize is part of the binge eating is coming from a lack of setting those boundaries with the people who might be triggering to you. It might be knowing what emotions you're experiencing and what it is you need knowing when you're exhausted and need a time out, when you're extremely bored because you're doing things you don't really love to do and bringing in more things that are joyful and happy for you. It's a lot of internal work, but it's worth it. That's the big thing I wanna share with you. It is worth it. From when I started this, I broke off a toxic relationship 10 years ago. I have gone on a deep, deep dive into therapy, tons of help books, on how to deal with emotions, experience emotions, how to communicate properly. And it has been amazing. Not only has it benefited me, but I also use many of the things I've learned to help my own coaching clients get through their struggle. So I just want to encourage you, even though it might sound overwhelming, even though you might be thinking, oh my God, I could never say or do these things, you can. You just need help. You need somebody, whether it's a therapist, a counselor, You need somebody in your corner to help groom you on how to speak up, how to take charge, how to do the things that you need done so that way you have a different emotional response. So you aren't binge eating, but it can be done. It might take you five years, but what you'll start to see is you're decreasing in binging because you're handling your emotional needs totally differently. So anyway, The short here is if you struggle with emotional eating, I'm sorry, emotional triggers to binge, what you wanna begin doing is questioning where do you wanna go next? Can you call up a therapist, counselor, maybe start working on building up some boundaries, building up some emotional awareness, getting some help with this and learning how to process your thoughts differently because life happens to all of us. It really comes down to how you think about it that will cascade the binge to happen. You know, I could go out tomorrow and see a flat tire and go, ah, okay, got a flat tire, call up the the company, have them come out, fix the tire. Where somebody else might come out and be like, great, this means I'm having a terrible day today. My whole day is gonna go to heck in a handbasket and you know, they just tend to fall apart. And what it is is we both came out and saw the flat tire but how we interpret that information, what we make it to mean to us, greatly will affect how the rest of our day goes and how we evaluate everything. But it all starts in your mind and how you think about things. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. I'm gonna be doing a few more videos in the series on binge eating. If you have any questions or ideas you want me to dive into, please share them in the comments below. And please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm really trying to help as many people as I can with these messages. And the more that we um, help spread this information together, I think the more we can help people really get a better handle on their eating and losing weight in a really healthy, sustainable way. You guys have a good one. I'll talk to you soon.